Español 1, capítulo 1b. Y tú, ¿cómo eres? As you can see, I'm going to teach a lot of vocabulary in this lesson. Lección 1, describiendo personalidades, describiendo las personalidades. Uh, but before I do that, I want you all to look really carefully at the title of this unit. Y tú, ¿cómo eres? Pay close attention. I think I've mentioned this before, but pay close attention. This question mark is grammatically correct, and this letter is minuscula. It is not capital. It's lowercase. In Spanish, it's different than in English. Just because you, you have the beginning of a, at the beginning of a sentence, you capitalize the letter, but this question mark doesn't signify the beginning of the sentence. It signifies the beginning of the question, where you change the inflection of your voice. Spanish is much more of a verbally based language compared to English, which is based more in the, the writing part of it. Okay, now we're shifting over and I'll get into the vocab. All right, so we're talking about describing people's personalities. And here we have adjetivos de personalidad. Now, adjetivos, oh, they're adjectives. So they're describing, in this case, people. And here are some people. I am, you are, my friend is. According to my family, I am, because, you know, my opinion of myself Yo soy artístico, could be different than my family's opinion of me. Remember my beautiful art artwork from the body parts? Según mi familia, yo no soy artístico. Yo no soy talentoso en el arte. Oh, very sad. So, I'll talk more about this in a moment. Let's talk about adjetivos de personalidad. So we're focusing over here. I don't know how many columns you can see, but as you look at all of these words, hopefully you're starting to see, oh, holy cow, artístico, talentoso, atlético, cognados. These are cognates. I really, if I just put it on the board and show you how to spell it in Spanish, you should understand the meaning because it's so similar to the English. But at the end of the word, most of them, almost all of them, until you get to words that don't end in O or A, um, they have two different endings. If you're talking about a guy, it's going to end in O. If you're talking about a girl, it's going to end in A, masculine, feminine. I'll save most of that explanation for another lesson. but. I'm just going to, instead of pronouncing artístico, artística, talentoso, talentosa, I'm just going to go with the O ending because it's what I wrote first. With one or two exceptions. Artístico, talentoso, atlético. Note there is no H sound. It's not atlético, it's atlético. Deportista. This one I've underlined the ending. There is no O. If you are a male, or if you are a female, it's going to be deportista. Oh, what does deportista mean? That's good. It's not a cognate. Well, what are deportes? Tennis, volleyball, basketball, football, football americano, cricket, etc. Those are deportes. So deportista, that's right. Same as atletico. Okay. Desordenado, desordenado, ordenado, estudioso. Hopefully everybody understood all these, even though I only explained one of them. But then we have trabajador, trabajadora. Well, a trabajador is a worker. A trabajadora is also a worker, male, female. But if you're using it as an adjective, it's hardworking. So, trabajador, trabajadora. It, there is no trabajadora. Now we're going to the second column. Am I still in? Yeah. All right. These three words all mean the same thing. 
So, so long as you can figure out what one of the three this one, means, you know what they all mean. Gracioso, chistoso, which is the one that I use the most, comico, which is the one I use the second most. Okay? This is a false cognate. It does not mean gracious. Go back to this one. Comico. Okay? Gracioso, chistoso, comico. Then we have two more. These two mean the same thing. Neither one of them are a cognate. We have perezoso and flojo. Most people I know use the word flojo, but most textbooks use the word perezoso. Why? Well, I won't get into that, but they both mean lazy. Okay? It's a word that I unfortunately have to use a lot with my students. Anyway, flojo, perezoso. You will not hear me use the word perezoso very often. Only when I'm reading it out of a text or something. I use flojo. Alright, bueno, malo. I think you can figure out what those mean. But this is a good person or a bad person. Okay? Good like an angel, bad like a devil. Right? Okay, moving on. Atrevido. That means daring. A daredevil. Okay. Ooh, like the superhero. I really like him. Okay. Um, I lost my train of thought. Okay, anyway. Atrevido. It's a daredevil. It's somebody who's daring. Reservado. It doesn't mean to make a reservation, but I bet you could figure out what it means. If you don't, timido and reservado are very similar. What's the only difference? One, the person's just maybe more quiet. That doesn't automatically make them timid, okay, or shy, but <laughs> laid back, quiet. All right, reservado, timido. I love this, and I love having students that are simpaticos. All right, simpatico. It means nice, kind. Serio. And this one's not in the book, but if you're gonna have serio, you gotta have payaso. Some people say that I am very serio. Other people say that I am very payaso. Okay, serio, serious. Payaso, silly. You know what? Maybe I'm yin yang. Maybe sometimes I'm serio. Sometimes I'm payaso. I think we all are. Okay, it's still part of our personalities. Misterioso, generoso, romantico. I'm definitely romantico. Well, maybe not. Okay. All of these ended in O and A, except for trabajador and deportista. Now, are we here? Come on. We've got some that end in the letter E. There is no O, there is no A. If it's a male, if it's a female, it doesn't matter. They're all going to end the same way. Inteligente, paciente, impaciente, sociable, independiente. All right, that one's hard because a lot of people say independiente. All right, well, it's independiente. And that is the initial vocab for this section. It's almost all of it. This is all describing how people are. Well, remember how I mentioned the part about um, serio y payaso? Well, here we have how often that can happen. Frecuencia. Siempre. Well, I would like to say that Siempre soy um, trabajador. I really believe that. I don't think I'm ever lazy. Siempre soy trabajador. Okay? Generalmente, generalmente, soy muy payaso. A veces, soy serio. Right? I think that's the, the formula you get from my class. So, siempre, 100% of the time, most of the time, almost all the time. Generalmente, generally, not generally, that's, that's history, right? Gen get it? Generally, generally. Mm. All right, uh, my camera lady just rolled her eyes and moaned. All right, a veces, at times, sometimes. All right, um... There are other frequency words, but this is a good start. I mean, I'm giving you a lot for the first lesson of the chapter, but I have to. If you look at the first four pages of the book, you're going to see it. All right, then we have más vocabulario según. And I brought it up there, and I'm going to bring it up again, 
here because it's my experience that students always forget this word, but it's actually pretty important. Segun means according to. So whoever the person is, after you say segun, it's from that person's perspective. So segun mi amigo. Segun mi familia. Segun uh, mi hija, my daughter. Okay, segun mi hija, soy muy cómico. No. Okay, so that's it for the individual words. Now let's put them together in sentences. Now we're moving over here. We're almost done with the lesson, believe it or not. Okay, I know you probably have to pause a lot in order to copy all this down. Él es mi amigo. Es deportista. Le gusta practicar deportes. You could also say le gusta practicar los deportes, but I won't get into that. All right, él es mi amigo. Es deportista. Look at this accent. If you have the word L and there's an accent mark over it, it means he. If there's no accent mark, it means the. Alright, so that accent mark becomes really important because it completely changes the uh, word. So, hey, he's my friend. He's athletic. Well, if he's athletic, he probably likes playing sports. And that's exactly what it says. Ella es mi amiga. Es trabajadora. Le gusta estudiar. So, él means he, ella means she. So, she's also my friend. She's a hard worker. Hard workers like to study. All right, a couple of notes on this. Am I okay on this side or do I need to be back over there? Back over here, okay. Here we go. Gust, remember what I told you at the big, well, last chapter. What I told you was that in order to have a sentence, you have to have a conjugated verb. Well, every single one of these sentences has a conjugated verb. Gusta is the verb conjugation of gustar, S is the verb conjugation of ser. Ser means, is one of the verbs that means to be. We'll get into that later. Just know that we have a verb conjugation in every single one. Questions? Eres, es, and soy. These are all verb conjugations of ser. So, if I ask a volunteer from the room, como eres? The volunteer will say, Yo soy simpática. <laughs> I agree with that some of the time. Okay? Yo soy simpática. Not me. I'm repeating what she said. All right? Como eres? And then she says, yo soy simpática. All right. Now we can say, como es? Well, let's say we're talking about Barack Obama. Como es Barack Obama? Well, I would say, el es inteligente. Forget about politics. Whether you like him or you don't, the guy's smart, okay? Como es Barack Obama? El es inteligente. All right, we'll talk about a famous female. We'll talk about Hillary Clinton. Como es ella? Again, forget the politics. She's really smart too, but it doesn't change. It stays on an E ending. So whether it's a man, Barack Obama, or a woman, Hillary Clinton, El, Barack, es inteligente. Ella, Hillary, ella es inteligente. Okay? Now, I would also agree that because they're politics and they're in the public eye, politicians, and they're in the public eye, that they are not reserved. They're not quiet, the quiet types. So, I would say, el es reservado, ain't, no, el no es, el no es reservado, ella no es reservada. So the no goes right before the es. All right, now, pop quiz for anybody in the room. Oh, I know who it's going to be. I'm going to ask this question, and I'm going to hear possibly a painful answer. Como soy? Tu eres payaso. Okay. Now I'm going to ask myself that question. Como soy? Si. Yo soy payaso. Alright, so when you're asking what you are like, either somebody can answer it for you, 
or you can answer it yourself. If you answer it for yourself, you say yo soy. If, you, if somebody answers it for you, it's tu eres, or we'll get into usted es later on. That is the opening lesson of Capitulo 1B. Adios.